Hey, how you doing? I'm Matt Anderson with some more tips to help you produce better video and audio. Today I'm going to talk about how to get the best compression settings for your video to be translated to the web. A lot of times folks shoot great video, looks good in your camera, looks good when you get home and you plug it into your TV, but for some reason when you get it up on the web it just doesn't look right. What I suggest is that you go ahead and compress it as best as you can for the web with the highest settings and the smallest file size so you can make sure when it goes through the translation process of YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook that it maintains or retains some of the uh, settings that you have so it looks great on the web. Today I'm going to be using uh, the QuickTime package that comes bundled with Final Cut Pro, but this will work whether you use a compressor, of course, that comes with Final Cut Pro uh, Suite or Adobe Media Encoder, which of course comes with the Adobe Suite or Sorensen or some other conversion process. But these basic settings will work for you know any kind of uh, compression software that you may use for your video to be translated to the web. All right, first off, I'm going to look at a piece here that I have, just a little short seven second piece that I already have here on my Final Cut Pro timeline. You want to go up to File, Export, not QuickTime Movie, but down to Using QuickTime Conversion. This is the one I'm using here. Um, down here, you want to, of course, name it. I'm going to use it, call it uh, Compression Test. And then down here at Options, you want to click on your movie settings. And it gives you fit several things here for video, sound, and uh, for the internet. First up, under Video, under your settings, you want to make sure it's set for H.264, but it gives you a bunch of different codecs. Set it on H.264. Now under Motion, and your frame rate, you want to maintain the same frame rate that you have uh, that you shot the video in, that you exported it as from your timeline. Uh, usually for the web, the best thing to shoot at is 30p, 30 progressive frames per second. That way you don't get the interlace issues where you see kind of like uh, some jagged edges and those sorts of things. And we're actually going to do another tutorial to help you understand the difference between progressive and interlaced video. But uh, ba basically you want to maintain your current frame rate setting here. Now under keyframe, you can set it under automatic, but for me, I tend to set it at the same frame rate, meaning that it keyframes, it makes an adjustment for motion and any kind of issues like that uh, at the same rate that I shot the video at. So for me, it's 30 frames per second. YouTube now suggests that you uncheck this frame reordering issue here. So if they're going to be your, you know, your host, that's where your video is going to land. You want to follow the rules of what they suggest that you do. Next, under the compression settings, it comes up automatically under high, uh, but I'll show you how this is going to make an adjustment here in a few seconds when we get over here to the data rate. Now, under encoding, you want to make sure it stays under best quality. Now, if you're really in a hurry and you got to get it up on the web as quickly as possible, you just put it under faster encoder and it will encode uh, with a single pass. Now, but under best quality, it's going to give you a multi-pass setting, meaning it's going to take a little longer, but it's going to make sure it makes all of the kinds of adjustments for, uh, to minimize motion artifacts and the other kinds of issues that you may find uh, in your video. So let's go ahead and just uh, click on best quality here. Now under data rate, uh, you know, you could leave it under automatic, but say for instance you shot it uncompressed or you used a Apple's ProRes 422 codec, it could be as high as 25,000 if not higher uh, kilobits per second, which is a lot of data moving at a fast rate of speed and it's going to really get bogged down in the translation process. So I would advise that you restrict it. Now if you want to maintain HD quality, whether you shot it uh, uh, 1280 by 720 or 1080p, uh, what you should do here is put it at 5000 if you want to maintain that. Now, of course, you know, YouTube has settings for HD now, so go ahead and leave it at 5000. Now, if you're concerned about it, uh, you, you're going to maintain your aspect ratio, the size of your video, and you still want it to be an HD size, but you can get away with some lower uh, uh, quality, slightly less color, slightly less vivid color, uh, slightly less sharp, then you can put it down to about 1500. So these are some things that you can do. So between 1500 and 5000, granted, the higher you put it, uh, the more issues that someone who's trying to look at your video may take a little longer to, to load and those kinds of things. But again, understand the bottom line is we want to minimize how much of a translation that it has to go through when it gets to YouTube or, or Vimeo or one of the other online uh, sites for video. So let's just say 1500 here. And then you want to leave it optimized for download. Click OK. Now under your sound, you want to go under settings, 
Under Format, click under AAC. That's going to give you a smaller file size, maintain a high level of quality. Uh, you can leave it under, under Stereo, under your channels. Your data rate here or, or your, uh, your uh, rate here, you can leave it at 48 or whatever it is that you record it at. I would suggest no lower than 44.1, which is a CD quality. 48.0 is actually at uh, DAT quality. So, you know, the higher the better. Again, under render settings, you want to put it under normal or better or best. For me, of course, I want to put it under best. I want it to sound uh, as best as it possibly can as it gets on the web. And then the target bit rate, I usually leave it at 192. You're really not going to hear much of a difference between 192 on up, uh, whether you get all the way up to 320. 320, you're kind of defeating the purpose because it'll end up, it's a much larger file size. And if you leave it at about 192, it still maintains great quality there. And then, of course, uh, render settings under uh, best. Finally, click OK. Click uh, Fast Start. You want to leave your Prepare for Internet Streaming the same down here at the bottom where it says Fast Start. I don't know if you've ever clicked on a video on the web and it took seemed like forever for it to try to load up for you, so you want to maintain at a fast start. Click OK, and then click Save. Bam, and there it goes. It begins the ex export process. It takes a few seconds for it here to get out of your nonlinear editor, uh, out to the place that you export it, and that's it. Again, I'm Matt Anderson. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have more tutorials coming up next time. Thanks for watching.